Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Nifty Numbers Family Math Night, and in this video, I'm going to share with you my twist on the estimating jar. Now, this is an activity that I've done with second through fourth graders, and it requires an estimating jar. Uh, most kids are pretty familiar um, with the estimating jar and making predictions, but I do talk to them about making a reasonable prediction. For example, is it reasonable that there are exactly two Hershey's Kisses in here? And of course, they're going to say no, because you can see that there are more than two. And then I say, well, is it reasonable that there are 1,000 Hershey's Kisses in here? And again, that they say, uh, no, that's not reasonable, um, that that would be way too many. Even in second grade, they're, they're pretty sure that there's not 1,000 Hershey's Kisses in here. And then I tell them that partway through counting um, the Hershey's Kisses, I'm going to stop two times and I'm going to let them change their prediction if they want to, based on the information that they now have. So. Um, the first thing that they do is create their prediction, of course, and if you're lucky enough to have whiteboards, I love whiteboards um, um, for students, um, but if not, paper and pencil works just as, just as well. So then the students write down their prediction, and I start counting. Now in second grade, um, I use a place value board as I'm counting these, and I'm skip counting by twos. It gives them some great practice in uh, getting familiar with those uh, the patterns and skip counting by twos. And so I'm counting by twos and I'm putting these on the, on the, in the ones column. And when I get to 10, I group those tens and I put them into a, um, a little cup. So now we have cups of tens and some ones on the place value board. It makes it super easy at the end if we want to count them all very quickly um, to skip count by tens. Okay. So um, to get, uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to quickly just take a whole bunch of these out of here. I am counting these with the students, and I may stop about this much and say, okay, um, there are X number missing from um, this jar. Based on that information, if you want to change your estimate, you can. If you don't want to change your estimate, if you're happy with it, just leave it. And then I ask the students if they do change it, they don't erase the answer that, that their original prediction because I'd like them to see uh, the progress of their thinking at the end. So I just ask that they cross it out and put their new prediction next to it. Okay, so then when pencils are down, I start counting again. And I may wait until we get just a little bit at the bottom there. Okay, and then I say, okay, if you want to change your prediction based on this new information, um, you can. If you're happy with it, just leave it the way that it is, and um, then we count them all. Now, if kids get the exact answer, you're going to know about it because there's going to be some hooping and hollering, and I got it, I got it. Um, but then I talk to them about this being an estimate. There are some times in math where we absolutely need to have um, the uh, exact answer. And there are some times in math when an estimate is good enough. And that's the purpose of this activity, is to come up with and be comfortable with just um, developing um, an estimate. So if you got between this number and this number in your estimate, um, then pat yourself on the back because that's a pretty good estimate. Now I'll share with you how many Hershey's Kisses were in there. There were 30 um, in there. And now you can see what's coming up. Um, that is the small jar. We're now going to move on to the large jar. So I introduce them to the new jar. And uh, they're all excited because that means more Hershey's. Um, but then I, t I asked them, well, relative to this jar, now we know that there were 30 Hershey's in this jar. Um, can you use this information to help you make a reasonable estimate about how many are going to be in that jar? And, and, I, and then I say, do you think there's going to be more or less than 30? And they can obviously see that it's probably going to be more than 30, but they have me do this little thing here, measure that, and then they want me to turn the jars like this and see the bottoms of it and so forth. And I do um, tell them that I'm going to stop, just like the last time, I'm going to stop twice and give you an opportunity to change your prediction if you want to. And then when we're done counting this, they'll discover that there were 61 kisses in that container. And of course, I have prepared these in advance. I know exactly how many are inside these jars. And I deliberately did not make this 60 um, I, because we're working on estimating and getting kids comfortable with about how many? About, this is about, the large jar is about twice as many as the small jar, okay? And they can, we talk about that, you know, um, can you see the patterns there? And then they come up with, well, there's about two of these in that one 
large jar. And then the next thing is, I ask them, well, how many Hershey's are there all together? And they're doing a little addition problem. So they will add the 30 and the 61, and I'll discover that there are 91 all together, but we are not done yet. Because the next step is, well, if there are 91 Hershey's, how many Hershey's does everybody get if we divided them out equally? What do you need to know to solve that problem? And of course, they need to know how many students there are in the class, and so we count everybody. And I am not included in that because I tell them, um, it's not really about how many you guys get. It's really about how many leftovers there are or remainders because that's what I get. So they get a little bit excited about that. Um, and, uh, and you can see that these are the two questions that I've asked them and now they're working on how many does each student get and they're problem solving that. Um, in second grade, it's a little bit of a challenge for them to do that. This is a division problem. So we talk about some strategies. Can you draw a picture? Of, of this and some students will use tally marks and give each student one by one until they get through their 91. Um, we talk about chunking it. Can each student get two Hershey's and we go around and we count two, four, six, eight, ten. You know, well if everybody can get two, do you think everybody could get five? And we skip count by fives. Um, and since some people, some kids do um, some repeated subtraction. So there's a variety of ways to solve um, the problem. We talk about all of those so that those students that um, are having a hard time um, un understanding how to even get started, uh, they have some strategies for the next time we do it because there is a next time. I bring out the jar again and this time it may, it's filled with a different object and it could be filled with jelly beans. And the first thing I do is I hold a jelly bean up and a Hershey's Kiss up. And I say, um, do you think that there will be more or less jelly beans in the jar than there were Hershey's Kisses? So they're looking at the sizes and most of them figure out that there's going to be more jelly beans. Now, last time in the small jar, there were 30 jelly beans. So make a prediction of, or 30 Hershey's, make a prediction of how many jelly beans you think there are going to be in this small jar. And then we keep track. And whatever the number is down here, we talk about, well, remember last time it was about twice as many. So that helps them figure out how, you know, it helps them come up with a, an answer for um, a reasonable estimate for how many are in the large jar. Then we may do several other um, objects as well. I don't always do food, but it's awfully fun to start with food. And then at some point I may change the size of the jars. I may use this jar and this jar. Okay, and this one may be, you know, four times this one, or maybe I find one that's three times this jar. You're gonna need to play around with your jars um, in the beginning until you get the ones that, that you like. And then I've, I've labeled all my jars. There's an A on this one. I have a B on this one. Oh, this one's fine because this one happens to be one and a half times this jar. And I've got some samples up here to, sh to share with you. Okay, there's two times so the large jar is two times the small jar. The large jar here is three times. Yes, I do have a one and a half times. I've used this one in third and certainly in fourth grade. And it's it's a lot of fun because they're doing um, some fraction work there. And then this one is on here because sometimes you can go in the opposite direction. You can start with the large jar and then move down to the small jar. And now they're doing some fractions and some division work so going on and you can even have three jars a small a medium and a large i've done that as well okay that's a lot of fun um in second grade with a high group of second grade students i was working on the one and a half times um jar and i want to share with you um, what one the thinking of one student so she knew that the large jar was one and a half times the small jar and there were 92 objects in the small jar. I don't remember what it was. It may have been gummy bears. But there, let's say that there were 92 gummy bears in this small jar. And so now she was making the prediction for the jar that was one and a half times the small. And she knew that she needed to add this plus half of this, but she did not know. She was in second grade. She did not know how to get half of 92. So we broke 92 into two numbers that she was comfortable with, 80 and 12. She was able to take half of each one of those numbers and come up with 46. She then added the 46 
to the 92, and she came up with her estimate for the large dark. Great, great problem solving um, opportunities with this um, simple um, twist on a very popular um, uh, math activity, the estimating jar. So have fun with this with your students.